And we're live, hopefully, because if anything goes right tonight, but uh, it's looking good. Um, probably best that I am doing it on OBS tonight rather than the Restream Studios, because I'm going to be grabbing stuff from the other screen here. Um, but I'm hoping you can see me, and I'm hoping you can hear me. I can see myself in the little screen there, and um, everything looks fine at my end. Uh, Restream wasn't working tonight for some reason. I, I, I connected on it about 10 minutes ago, and it wouldn't connect to the YouTube channel. Uh, it might be because this stream's unlisted, but then I kept thinking, well, hang on. When I was, you know, learning to use Restream, I, I made sure that I did loads of <laughs> unlisted videos to test it's working. So, uh, something hasn't gone right today, but who knows. But uh, how the devil is everyone? Now, we're going to be... Uh, uh, it wasn't Dennis Quaid quote from Aliens, Alan Davis. It was uh, Bill Paxton. Game over, man. Game over. <laughs> But uh, yeah, we're on OB OBS tonight, so we are going to be working on a little bit of the Arduino. Now, I don't know if anyone saw my Arduino tutorial videos. And you know what? I'm just going to check something now. I don't even know if I've still got them up on my channel. I've got a funny feeling that I didn't only take them down. I think I, I, I deleted them. I'm going to check uh, Arduino. Because I'm spelling Arduino wrong. No, I did. I, I got rid of them. They're not, they're not there anymore. Um, the reason I did that is because I couldn't continue the series. I was getting so many emails saying, can you do this? Can you do this? Can you can you go on? Can you give me some advice? I thought I haven't got time to do this. So I, first of all, I made them unlisted. And then because of my OCD in me, I thought, you know what? Let's just delete them off there. And then uh, we can start afresh. So as for a tutorial tonight, I'm going to kind of show you because I'm, I'm, I'm doing something for myself. We're actually going to be doing the uh, ET engine here and uh i'm going to give you my method behind my madness i've already done a sketch so i'm going to show you what the sketch does and then we're going to change the sketch around to show you how you can light in different ways so um it's either going to be really boring or um something really interesting i did take them down jim i think i did i thought i just made them private but i just take it down jim that superman's driving me nuts at the moment i've had three foul prints to that i'm trying to think of the best way to print it and at the moment, I've, I, it was standing up, but now I'm lying it down. There is another print option where I can print it in four pieces. So I might end up doing that and then have to stick them together like the Batman. But we'll, we'll, I'm, I'm going to try it on the end of three. So uh, I haven't forgot, Jim. I'm, I'm on that. Okay. Uh, I watched them and you're upset. You blew up. I did blow up. Look, I've got a brand new one. <laughs> Look. Look, it's all shiny. There's no burn marks on that one. So um, I think it works. I hope it does. I've got the uh, Arduino program all in here at the moment uh, but i want to show you a program first uh, i'm going to have to set up my microphone i think hang on that's better you can hear me now um i had to set up my um microphone on that now if you're doing any sort of build let me go back to my oh no i haven't gone on that hang on a second I've got to remember to press the transition button. If you're doing any sort of build with uh, LEDs and you want to add more than one LED to the system, then you definitely, definitely, definitely need a resistor on every single LED you're putting in. And I'm going to explain why that is tonight as well. I'm going to show you that. Now, in the example that we're going to be showing tonight, I've got this engine here. So uh, let me just skip to uh, this camera. If this works, transition this camera here and as you can see we're going to be putting a pink light in the center there and then we've got one two three four five six seven eight nine red leds around here which are going to be three mil ones and then we've got one two three four blue leds around the side so we're looking at nine four five about 14 15 leds just in this one thing here now every single led is going to have to have a resistor on because if it doesn't a they'll be really dim and b if i've got them uh, paralleled up together the first ones will be bright and then they'll just get dollar and dollar and dollar and dollar and dollar what we're going to be doing tonight is i'm going to be working on the blue lights and then coming up with a fix for the red lights now the blue lights are going to pulse i think as i mentioned yesterday pulse was a good word far better than frob <laughs> that i was using didn't the Rams, they did blooming great, Jim. I was so happy with the Rams. And I'll tell you what, this Saturday is going to be absolutely brilliant. 
But uh, this will be the first part that I'm starting to build on the ET, so I'm getting very excited for it. Now, if you remember me showing off the great big massive thing with loads of wires in it that revolves around one way and revolves around the other way, well, I've updated it. So there's going to be a flashy warning now. So if you're uh, epileptic uh, and you're light uh, sensitive, then don't watch the next bit. But look, how tidy does that look now? Much tidier, all in one shell. And when you turn it on, absolutely perfect. As a matter of fact, if I've got that upside down, clockwise at the bottom, and clockwise at the top, that, that's perfect. And I've got a, uh, a control here so I can adjust the speed. Let's go like that. And then like you can have it faster. Or I can slow it right down. But that is what's been taking me two days. So basically, I was soldering this. God, I was soldering this yesterday to about three minutes before the stream starts. I burnt myself loads of times. And then, believe it or not, none of those wires are soldered in. None of them. They've all been put in a uh, heat shrink and shrunk in so that's holding them together. That's the only way that I can do it. Because what was happening is I was trying to put two LEDs on one wire. I did the first inner circle. And then as soon as I do the outer circle, obviously the heat conducts down to the first one. And it pings off and I was just getting annoyed. But uh, today I'm calm because it's all finished. And that's probably the hardest thing to do, I reckon, on this ET build. I reckon doing the, uh, the drilling out of holes on this sort of thing and stuff is going to be dead easy. So uh, we'll have to see. The Arduino video gave you a good start. Now making my own projects. Oh, that's good, Jerry. I'm glad to hear that. I'm going to try and go through it again. And then when this video goes up on... Um, uh, I'm probably going to put this on the channel on Friday. Then... Um, We'll see if people like it. I am going to, uh, I will be editing this video on Friday though. Because some of the information I just gave you there about, you know, the Super Snake and stuff like that isn't public. So I don't want, I don't want to get into trouble with that. So uh, you want an LED collar. We'll berg this, to be honest with you. The, um, since the last time you saw this, I had to re 3D print this. Because the last collar looked absolutely brilliant. The only stupid thing was that, you know, that whole measure twice, cut once thing. Well, um, it was about a centimetre too big. So I had to 3D print another one, uh, looking like that. You know what, thinking about it though, I wonder if Phoebe would like wearing something like that. <laughs> but that was a, a lot of work that was. But uh, I'm going to show you tonight now about how we're going to do the Arduino. So let me just talk about the Arduino first. If I uh, transition over, um, this is what an Arduino looks like. You've got a USB port which provides voltage to the pins. You've also got a nine volt port as well. So if you do want to use USB, you can either use a nine volt battery or a nine volt power supply. Now, all of these pins here will give five volts worth of power output. Uh, we have got one, uh, three grounds on here. We've got two this side and one this side. These pins down here for analog, and you have got some analog pins on these as well. I don't know if you can see that, but the, the numbers here have got like a squiggly line on them. The ones with a squiggly line, I can get analog as well, which we're going to be using one of them today, and I'll tell you why that is later on. Uh, we've got a reset button there. I want to reset that back. Uh, what else? It's a pretty boring thing, to be honest with you. Um, is there anything else, really? No. There we go. Uh, I'm going to be connecting wires up and testing things with these. These are just Arduino wires. You've seen me use these before on a lot of my builds. We've got the ones which are male and male. I've got the male and female ones as well um and then obviously i've got tons and tons of resistors now the resistors i'm going to need tonight are going to be just looking at my well we'll uh we'll figure that out because i'm going to use my program so uh if we go over to my screen i think the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to do one led i'm going to do a blue led now we know this led calculator is invaluable and you'll see why at the moment so we know that uh, we're going to be putting 5 volts to it because, as I said, the Arduino pins come to 5 volts. The LED drop for the lights, well, if we're going to be using a blue LED, it gives you the values here. So a blue LED is between 3 and 3.5. So I'm going to put in 3.2. The milliamps for LEDs, well, pretty much all LEDs are 20 milliamps. And for this uh, test, I'm only going to do one. So when you put design circuit, it tells you that we need at least a 91 ohm resistor in between this if we were going to have 10 leds it tells you how to wire them and what ohm resistor to put in if we're going to have 
100 LEDs, same thing, all the way down. Now, if it needs to be done parallel or stuff like that, it will tell us that. But this is invaluable for telling us what resistor we're going to need. So uh, I'm just looking at all the resistors I've got. And I've got a 100 one here. Now, obviously, these are labeled 100 here. Oops, you can't see that. Hang on a second. I'm going to switch back over to normal cam there. Um, this is 100 here, but obviously resistors are coded by the colors on them, which is absolutely hopeless for me because I am colorblind. <laughs> so first thing we're going to do, I'm going to I'm going to connect uh, the breadboard. This is called a breadboard. This is how you can use to test things. See, see how they work. The way it works is if I plug something into one of these holes here and here on this side, it will make whatever I plug into that. Say I put a ground in there, it makes that whole strip of dots at the top ground. If I put a live in any of these, it will make that whole strip live. And it's the same as these ones, but these go this way. So if I put something in like a, 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 a source into that hole there, then that means that all of those holes become that hole there. It's like soldering them together. And it's the same for each individual one of those. This is actually two breadboards stuck together. So these only go up to here. They don't cross over this middle line here. So the first thing I wanna do is I want to provide a ground source from the Arduino here. Now, as I said, we've got three ground sources on here. We've got one here and we've got two at this side. So it doesn't matter which one I use. So I'm going to put this in that one there and I'm going to stick that into, I mean, the breadboard says ground anyway, but it doesn't, you don't have to use it for ground. You can stick the positive in there if you're, you wanted to, but I'm going to put that in there just like that. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get a live feed. Now tonight I'm going to start off with, I'm going to be using pin nine. Pin nine has got this little analog squiggle on it. And the reason I want to use an analog squiggle is because uh, I want this to pulse. And with uh, digital, it's a lot harder to send a uh, different sort of voltage levels to the bulb. With analog, it just goes from zero to 255. And the lower it is, the more the bulb's off. The higher it is, the brighter the bulb's got. So I'll show you the sketch in a minute of how I'm doing that, but uh, we'll go back to that. So I'm gonna plug this into pin nine and seeing as pin nine is gonna be providing five volts of power, but up and down, I'm gonna put that into the positive side there. So now this breadboard has got a negative and a positive side. Right, next thing we need, we need a blue LED looking like that the short end of a blue led is the the ground end negative end and the long end is the positive end a lot of people are going to be saying oh you need to refer to them as cathode and anode well in my day minus means negative positive and, and sorry negative and the plus means positive so we're going to stick with that so, <laughs> okay so i'm going to put this in making sure that it straddles two of these holes here just like that now, what we need to do now is we're going to need to connect this to either the negative and the positive. Now, we already know that we're going to need a 100 ohm resistor, which I've already got here. So what I can do, it doesn't matter what side you connect the resistor to. I can connect it to the positive side of the LED or the negative. But I'm going to put it on the negative side. So I'll put one side in the ground side there. And then I put one on any one of those holes on this side of the LED here. The only thing that's left to do is to connect a positive to the positive rail. So we've got this here. Anywhere I can put that over here if I wanted to. I can put it all the way over here if I wanted to because the power here is going along the whole strip again. So I'm going to put this in here like that. And eventually I'm going to put that into any one of these holes here to light the LED. But we're not going to do that yet. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the Arduino program. Are you, are you keeping up with me so far? <laughs> um, Ian Campbell, you're planning on using an RGB 10mm LED with 10 optics off it to different areas of MIG engine. Um, that's, that's something I'm going to be doing on the ET Shippy, and I'm going to have some... This is going to be a pulsating LED. You'll see in this like tutorial, I'm going to make a static LED as well. The static LEDs are either going to be lighting this or they're going to have our optic fibers in them. So uh, it's hard to resist some resistors, damn straight. 
You never used an Arduino before, but tempted to get a kit and learn. It's quite easy to learn, Daniel. And to be honest with you, a lot of things uh, have already been uh, done. As a matter of fact, my program I've done earlier is still on here. I'm gonna I'm gonna delete some stuff. Hang on a second, because I uh, <laughs> uh, uh, hang on. Uh, I wanna I wanna start from scratch. So hang on, stand by, stand by. Uh, okay. Because I want I want you to see what I'm programming in. You see, so okay. Now you program an Arduino by doing things called sketches, and a sketch is just a program which tells uh, the you, you you do it on your computer. You can do it on your phone now, I believe. You download it to the board, and it's stored in that board even when you disconnect the power and the computer. And as soon as it's powered back on again, it will remember that program and it will run. The routine that we do now don't be scared with what i'm about to show you because i'm going to show you the sketch uh for what i've done to make this poll say and i'm going to just quickly talk you through it okay so this is the sketch here anything that you see is faded out here that's just basically telling you what things do the program completely ignores all of that it will ignore all of this all this writing it or anything with two like forward slashes it ignores anything after it because that's just basically statements to say what things are doing okay um okay the first thing that you have when you do a sketch is basically telling it what you want things to do now these are called integers so basically you're you're giving uh, rather than have a, a pin number let me go back to my face rather than have a pin number it gets confusing seeing loads of numbers on the screen so you can give that pin a name okay so like for pin 9 that we're using at the moment we're sticking we've stuck an led in it so what i've done is uh i've called it led so int is the uh the the, the command you have to use for that space call it what you want but i've called it led space equals nine and a semicolon now, you may think I'm a, being a bit anal by saying uh, space, but it has to be exactly like that. You have to have a semicolon at the end there. You have to use int in small letters there. There's no other command. INT is the command you want to use. And when you type in INT, INT, if I do another one here, you'll see it changes color. So you know that there's a command going in there. Okay. So basically, int LED is nine. And we've created some more variables here rather than using numbers. So for the brightness is zero, the fade amount is five, okay? When you do a sketch, always, always, they'll always start up with this void setup build. And that's basically you telling it what you want the pins to do. So at the moment, pin mode tells the Arduino what you want the pin like nine to do. So if you take out LED, because that's just a variable at the moment, pin mode nine, it's an output pin. It can either be an output pin, or an input pin can't really be anything else okay um further down we're basically saying what we want that pin to do so analog right means that we're going to be sending uh, a signal from that pin to send voltage to sorry we're gonna <laughs> i'm getting myself confused now what that analog right means we're going to be sending voltage from that pin to the led okay Further down, this is basically just changing the brightness. So basically the brightness starts at zero and then it's going to uh, add the fade amount. So it's going to add five sort of like, uh, they're not volts, they're like milliamps, I guess, to it every time. When it gets to the top, it's going to go back down to the bottom again. You see fade amount then becomes minus fade amount when it gets to 255. And it's just going to repeat that over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. Now, when you've done a program, to make sure the program works, you need to click this tick here, which says verify. And what that does is it compiles the program here, as you can see, compiling sketch. Just make sure everything's working. If there's any errors, it will throw the errors up here. Now, don't worry if you don't understand the programming, because if you want some, want, I don't know, to light up an LED, you can just type in Arduino LED sketch, and there'll be hundreds of people on there who've done a sketch for you. Okay, but the best way that I learned, or how I learned to do that, is to get yourself a program and just break it down into each individual line. And as you can see there, you can actually read what every single thing is doing. Okay, but the commands, the most important thing, 
even you see where the pin mode there, the, the mode is with a capital M, the, the, you have to have that sort of syntax. I can't just type pin mode with a little M. I have to use the capital M there. Okay, now we need to send that to the Arduino. So for that reason, and I'm hoping I've got it all plugged in here. I think I have. I'm going to connect the Arduino to the, uh, I'm just going to take those leads out for a second, to the USB socket. Now when you plug this in, as you can see, we've got an on light and I've got an LED here as well. I think it's lit that up for some reason from a previous program. But uh, that's how we know that's on. And then all we have to do then, uh, is it worth mentioning COM port program mode? Not really, this is really basic stuff Ian, this is so. We'll, uh, we're, what we're gonna do now anyway, let's, uh, I've just uh, lost my train of thought there. We've compiled this to know that it works, we're gonna send it to the Arduino. So what we do is we're gonna press this button here. So before I press it, I'm gonna go back to my head cam you can see what the lights do when I send this program I'm going to send it now and you see the lights are flashing and all of that and there we go so now that program is stored in the Arduino I can unplug this now and now we know that pin 9 which I'm about to plug this back into and the ground should make that blue LED pulse don't know if it will let's see <laughs> God, I hope this I hate doing things live because you never know if it's gonna work Okay, so the ground, I'm going to plug the ground back into the ground socket, which was here. Uh, ground there, yeah, yep. I'm going to plug the positive side into pin 9, and then I'm going to connect this side to the positive. And it's not working. Why isn't it working? Uh, stand by. I put that in the wrong way. Oh, because uh, I've taken the power off the uh, Arduino, silly me. You've got to keep this into power it, otherwise you ain't going to get a light come on. There you go. As you can see, we've got a pulsing, it's very washed out here, but we have got a pulsing blue light. And that will, won't take long at all. Now, remember I told you about... Uh, resistors for each led if i weren't wasn't to put a resistor in for each led watch what happens i'm going to put this one in here and then i'm going to add some let's add a another blue one i don't know if this is going to show up too well but uh here's the second one got a little bit dollar let's put a third one in there we've got a little uh three mil one here let's stick that in and we'll put a fourth one in put that in here you, you can't see this I know you can't ah it's it's a pain it's washed out okay well trust me this one's bright and these are getting dollar and dollar and dollar as they go through now if I was to have a resistor on every single one of these along here there'd be the same brightness so that's me pulsating LED and that's what I'm going to be using for this area of the ET engine now I need a static light now. I uh, I want to use that program. I'm going to amend that program so I've got a light which just stays on in the same program. Okay. So what I'm going to do now. Sorry, I'm not reading chat. I'll have a look at it in a minute. I'm going to add some lines to this. Okay. So the first line I'm going to put in is int, and I'm going to call it static LED space equals. And I think we'll put the static LED in pin ten. That's going to be in pin 10, put a colon, and I'm going to write a message saying uh, static LED light. And then after the uh, void loop section here, but after this sort of squiggle thing here, I'm going to be setting a command. Oh, no, we've got to do another thing first. I need to declare what that pin is going to be used for. So pin 10, pin mode, static LED, so that means pin 10, uh, is going to be an output pin. And once again, close brackets, and we have to put that semicolon at the bottom end, or it's going to be, uh, we're going to have a bad time. And then anything that to do with a program is always in, encompassed in these two, I don't know what these things are called, parenthesis? Is that what they're called? These two things here. So as long as I put it in between here, we're not going to have a problem. 
and all I want it to do is digital right and you see it's turned orange there I'm going to put static LED and I'm going to call it high to turn an LED on is high spelled static wrong static LED yeah to turn it on is high to turn it off is low so we want high and put the semicolon in there again once again what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the verify button just make sure the program is working we've got no errors there so I'll send that to the Arduino which is done and now we're going to go back to this camera here we need to set that up now so let's get me a little red LED I'm going to use standby again I'm going to use my uh, LED calculator program right so this time we got five volts going to a red LED which is roughly about two volts 20 milliamps still and I'm only going to use one LED this time it wants me to use 150 so let me uh, go back to the overhead I'm looking at all of my uh, all of my resistors here now it's better to go higher than lower I have got 150 but I have got a 200 which is what this one is so I'm gonna put the 200 in here once again we're gonna take it from the ground source there and put that in the other side then I need to connect I think we said it was pin 10 didn't we we set up so let's uh, find a lead we're gonna go from pin 10 which is the one right next to it and we're going to connect that to that socket this time rather than this whole rail because this rail is already being used by this one so I'm going to connect it to that socket there and theoretically when I put this red LED in here it should not only come on I can get it out it should not only come on but it should stay still it shouldn't be pulsating there we go a shame you can't see the colors let's see if i can uh turn down the am i turn down that you can kind of see the colors now look we've got blue flashing and we've got a red one and we can continue that as many times as you want to create different light effects to uh i don't know do whatever you need to do now i'll tell you some of the problems this causes I'm going to leave that quite dark at the moment if that's okay now some of the problems uh, that that causes the way that I've done that fade there having that sort of blinking effect isn't a problem because every time the program cycles through let me explain what this program is doing it's basically doing it quicker than you can the human eye can see it but it's basically getting to the bottom and just running this over and over and over and over and over and over and over again really really quickly which is why to you it looks like that static bulb is on all the time but it isn't until it gets to there until it gets the next instruction and it keeps cycling through now if I wanted to make a flashing bulb I would put in a function there called delay problem with putting a delay function is is it holds up all the rest of the program you can't use delay functions if you want to use a, b a blinking light and for that what I suggest you do is uh, download a program or another sketch just saying flashing multiple flashing LEDs and look at what they do with the programs basically what they do is they evaluate how much time has passed before it can come on and how much time has passed before it goes off and that's how it does it but i will probably do an arduino tutorial again when we come to doing flashing lights but i don't need to do any but uh there you go nice simple led there that was uh quite fun i'm going to read some of your comments if that's all right and i need i need a drink now <laughs> It is extremely case sensitive. The amount of times I've missed off a semicolon Ian, or a capital letter, as long as it changes colour when you're doing a command, you shouldn't really have a problem. And use variables, use use names like, you know, declare LED, static LED brightness, because if you don't and you end up putting this rather than static LED, I'm putting 10, or rather than LED, I'm putting 9. Can you see how confusing that gets? And like rather than brightness here, I'm putting in like zero. It's uh, it's just it's just far too confusing. So yeah, use variables. There is a someone who forget my tutorials. There is uh, someone that I 
went online and looked at. Let me just see if I can find him. Hang on. Uh, I'll give him a shout out. Uh, this guy was a great help. Here he is. Uh, I'm going to link you his website. His name is Paul McWater. And it's in chat there. Absolutely brilliant and really comprehensive. And he goes down from lighting an LED all the way up to doing your own Bluetooth switches and fans and God knows what else. But uh, yeah, really good guy he is. And uh, that's that's who I learned from when doing me uh, LEDs there. Let me just show you, uh, I'll show you that channel there. There he is. He looks like a school teacher, doesn't he? <laughs> but uh, yeah, Paul McWater. Uh, it does look like a cribbage board, uh, Angel. Saying that, you get bigger ones and smaller ones, but what you've got to remember is once you've made it on this, on the breadboard, this is the other thing that they don't tell you. I'm going to go back to this camera and we'll turn the brightness up a little bit on that again is uh it's all very well making this and have it working on a breadboard here but then you're going to need to wire this into either wires or a circuit board and that's when things are going to get a little bit difficult but uh pretty happy with how that is what i would end up doing is pretty much using wires so rather than have it in a breadboard like this i would have take that out and I'd have all of this on wires here. So if I say that the uh, green was negative, put these in here. Just a male and female wire here. Uh, I don't think I've got that plugged in right. Hang on a second. Stand by. Other way around. There we go. And I think you can see what's happening then. And then I can connect this to the Arduino. Now this Arduino is quite a big thing. You can actually download that whole sketch program to Arduinos which are the size of your thumbnail. And then you can just solder them to the wires as well. But uh, I think for the amount of things I'm gonna be plugging into this, I'm actually just gonna stick the whole Arduino because they're not very much money at all. I'm gonna stick the whole thing at the bottom of the ET, a, a spaceship and not worry about it. So turn my lights off. I can do, couldn't I? Let's turn this one off. Let's see what that does. There you go. Not too bad. <laughs> but uh, that's just a simple tutorial of uh, how to make LEDs and stuff go. <laughs> it is all clever stuff. It's quite, look, I'm all dark now. Shall I brighten myself up a little bit? I'll tell you what, that's probably a good time to show you this again now. Look, you can see it in the dark. <laughs> this is an Arduino. This was a pre-made pre board, this was. So, uh, blinking alert, blinking alert, lights everywhere. You can see probably the speed of ET spaceship was probably around about that. I'm guessing that looks about right. But uh, yeah, that's what I've been doing today. That was fun. <laughs> um. I have some custom decals to show off for it. The interior and also the number six in the correct font. Don't know if I'd use the number six, but the interior ones look great. What? What's that for? <laughs> oh, your Ford GT 40. I never did that one. I never did that. Power the Arduino. Good, good call, Jerry. I was trying to, uh, trying to figure out why it wasn't working. <laughs> The trial in there I had using the Arduino for an enterprise lost hours. No, definitely. It's it's the as long as you get your program right, then it shouldn't be too bad. I am I have bought uh let me let me show you some other things I've bought. I bought a nine volt supply, because I'm gonna be plugging this in. Obviously, nine volt supply is just gonna go into the Arduino right there. So uh the spaceship's gonna be powered. I also boarded a box of little plugs. So I can create a plug at the bottom of the spaceship and then the 9 volt supply will go into that. Um, and I've also got a splitter which will enable one 9 volt supply to not only power the Arduino but to power the 9 volt supply on this as well. So, uh, yeah. Anything else I've got there? No, I think that's it. I've been I've been spending too much money. But Mrs. Rhoda Wayne's downstairs doing exactly the same thing with Doll's House Biz. As a matter of fact, her Doll's House comes tomorrow, everybody. So you're not going to hear the end of it. <laughs> He's going to be getting absolutely loads. 
check out that nasty scar for the bomb going off on <laughs> darn plier bombs. Uh, you know what, Howard, I burnt myself today. It's not good. So that's another injury. The injury I did the other day on the uh, Cobra Bill, was it? Look, that's uh, healing up nicely. People haven't seen that. You can now pronounce Arduino. Arduino, John. <laughs> I don't know what to build. Any suggestions? You've done the R2-D2. Did you enjoy doing the R2-D2, Andy? Because that's a lot of electrics as well. The Bismarck's great. It just gets really, really detailed and fiddly. Um, the Iron Man's good. The R2-D2's coming out again soon. Hmm. I don't know. I think the Enterprise is going to be a challenge. The Enterprise, I reckon, is going to be a lot similar to how we did the uh, Millennium Falcon. But uh, you just know that a lot of the Star Trek community is going to be buying that. And you also know that they're going to have uh, a, lot of, a, a lot of mods for it because uh, they want it to be screen perfect. I didn't think I was a screen perfect sort of guy until I started watching E.T. again. And then I couldn't believe how many times the spaceship changes. There's all these white lights on the bottom of the spaceship, which I got a picture of, which don't appear ever again. <laughs> I've, I've got rid of all my pictures now, but uh, it's all cool. Doll's house build on the live stream tomorrow night, Wayne. Uh, Ian, I don't think she's going to assemble it tonight. I think she's, um, I don't think she's going to be assembling it for quite a while because she, she heard that it's best to do all the interior walls and floor before you put the thing together. So I think she's going to be doing that first before it even goes together. I'm not getting involved because if I get involved, I'll get stressed. But... Uh, some guy was complaining, though, but I'll tell you what, I will show you something she's made, though, which is really good. So, uh, if you can, I'm just going oh, to trying to control my camera tonight. I'm just turning that up a little bit while, the, while we've got the mood lighting on here. I'm going to just uh, leave you for one second. Stand by. Oops. <laughs> Did anyone else see the uh, the the Ecto One almost take a Burton off the shelf there, and the uh, the bonnet fell off as well? I don't know why that is. Hang on a second. Happy again. I just realised what uh, what happened. The um, the R two D two down there. Um, the the Ecto One sign fell down behind that poster there, and went down there. I moved this along, but this stops the door opening up too far to hit the Ecto One. That's another thing I need to fix later on. But uh, anyway, look, this is what Mrs. World of Wayne has made. Ian, she's doing your one now as well. But this looks brilliant. Check that out. Absolutely brilliant. Now, it's got a light in there. She had me doing the electrics for her. I'm trying to figure out how to turn it on. All right, okay, I can see here. So theoretically, if I could turn this switch. Uh, way. There we go. A, a light that comes on there a bit washed out there whoops i'm dropping things but uh yeah what she's been working at let me just put that back up because i don't want to uh break it she will kill me but yeah pretty cool huh so she's doing another one now which i believe is a garden patio or something but uh i'm gonna put that down very gently I don't know if she's watching the stream. If she is watching the stream. Oh dear. I don't know if she, she minds me taking that. <laughs> the hood's fine, Dash Riptide. There's no dent in it. What's that? I will, don't worry. Uh, it's not a big problem, Howard, if, 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 if I did do something to the bonnet because, like, you know, I've got spares. <laughs> so, I've got two, sp two spares, two spares. Wayne, what made you do the electrics in what? What made me do the electrics in what, the ET or Esther's thing? Or what? I don't know. That is her dream room. As a matter of fact, it's not a lot different from her lady cave she's got. It's quite small like that is, and there's no room to swing a cat in there. But uh, you've also signed up to something called Murder Mystery Quilt. What? So I've got loads of fabric to buy. I, I've 
I, uh, I don't even want to know. <laughs> I don't want to know. Yeah, Howard, what, what, what do you mean by what made me do the electrics? I'm confused. What made me do the electrics here? What made me do the electrics where? I'm aware there's like a 40 second delay. So while you're answering, I'm gonna I'm gonna take some milk. <laughs> when you get the Arduino, let me just show you something else. The uh God, I'm pulling everything apart tonight. You can get a kit and all of those resistors, all of the wires, the Arduino, the breadboards, the power supply, all can come and equip. This is on Amazon. It was in my store at one time and it tells you everything that's in there. It comes with a CD and gives you projects to do. So you can work through it like a school school um, project or something. Just seeing which way this opens. And as you can see, you've got all sorts of things. The most complete start, Uno R3 project. You've got all sorts of things in here. You've got like a, let's have a look. Remote control, so we can remote control some of our projects. You've got one of these little uh, key finders, like a tag. And then you've got the thing that will detect it there. You've got uh, these little nano LEDs there. Uh, a matrix board if you want to start writing your own messages. All sorts of things. Look, even how cute is this? Look, it's all a big breadboard. Look, look at that tiny one there. But uh, this is about for the full kit with the wires, the Arduino, everything. It bulbs, comes with LEDs as well. I think it was £49. On Amazon I might put it back in my store actually because I, I just know people are going to be asking about that later on so uh, we'll see don't drop it I've got to put that back somehow I don't know how I'm gonna do it with uh, I thought everything was stuck down but it's not but uh, no she's done really well there I haven't seen her for like 20 years while she's done it but I suppose that's what convalescing is after you've had a hysterectomy you uh, you build stuff <laughs> She will probably have her own YouTube channel soon, which would be pretty crazy. But uh, there you go. But it's been interesting uh, watching. I, I'm really invigorated by I, I go to bed thinking of this ET build, and I wake up thinking of it. And I see what Phil's getting up getting up to with his Yay Monsters one. And I'm very conscious that I might be falling behind. And I've always said this will be the first thing I do. So uh, when we do the first video for ET, you're going to see how this looks. It's going to look really good. It's, uh, it's a shame that I am putting a pink LED in here. Because it was pink in the film, but in a couple of scenes it's red. But I am wondering if I put red LEDs all around here and a pink LED in the middle, it's probably going to be washed out anyway. So, by the way, I don't think you can get pink LEDs, so it'll be uh, plastic acrylic over it as pink. Who knows? Uh, Mrs. Rhoda Wayne does post daily posts on her Instagram. The trouble is I can't link it tonight, Esther. I can't link it because Restream decided it didn't want to work very well. So uh, there you go. Borodow, there we go. You put it in there. Thank you. Burgess, you're waiting for two deliveries, making me think about ordering more. I even thought about the Bismarck, despite saying no to the details. The um, I think, Burgess, I've got 14 things on the go at the moment. I I'm saving the DC free, just so you know, to the summer, because I want to do that all in the workshop, and I want to have the door open and... It's going to be a lot of dust with that one. So that's held off in a minute. I've still got 13 issues of the Peugeot 205 to do. I, have, I think issue six is probably going to go out early next week. There's three videos on the channel at the moment. You've already seen the Cobra because I linked that to you. But I have got the Shelby Super Snake and I have got the Bismarck on there as well. What I'll probably do tomorrow is I'll link you the Bismarck link. That won't be out till next week though. So again, that'll be an early access for you. Um, and I've got the Terminator Pack 9 down there to do as well which uh, is good for me because I, I'm, I'm behind everyone on the Terminator, so it'd be nice to get caught up with that as well. But um, I did have a problem with the um, the finger fixes for model mods that I lost one. And unfortunately, um, I gave the rest of them away because I didn't plan to use it. So I've had to glue one of the fingers, unfortunately. But it's only the little one, I think it was. So um, that's not gonna, doesn't need to move around much anyway. So By the way, if you're nerds in here, Mrs. World of Wayne can't do this. So no matter how hard I try to get her to do it, whoops, she can't can't do it like a crab. <laughs> so you can't do Spock on your left hand. I can do it both. But then again, I've been watching Star Trek since I left the womb. <laughs> 38 people trying to do the Spock hands. How many have we got in here? Oh my God. 
Jim, you're moving house in March, so uh, oh right, okay, Jim, you better. I I'm hoping that Superman will be done before March. <laughs> I'll make sure I send it to the right place. I'm gonna have another crack at it tonight. I'll have that on the end of three, and then uh, I need to get some uh, transparent filament actually as well because I want to make a lot of lenses. If you if you're making lenses on a 3D printer, just so you know, you need to set your infill to a hundred percent. You can't have infill on it, otherwise it will smoke it up. But if it's a hundred percent, it's quite foggy but it's clear enough with the uh, windows on the, oh that's another thing actually um this this annoyed the hell out of me as well you're gonna love this one uh i've got to find it so stand by uh really need to tidy this drawer up here once i find it there we go i want to talk about this micro crystal clear now this, I think, is it $9.99 or $19.99 for this tiny little bottle? And uh, this has been used by modelers all over the world. This was recommended to me to make windows and to bond things which have got clear plastic and stuff like that. Absolutely brilliant stuff. So I had this brainwave. I can't see any difference between this and just normal P P PVA glue, which is like, I don't know five pound for 20 massive bottles of it so i did a test i put two of these in a petri dish and uh about i'd say two mils of the stuff one of pva and one of micro crystal clear let it completely cure and then peeled them off and i haven't got them here but you know what there was a tiny tiniest yellow tinge on the pva other than that there was no difference at all so i'm pretty miffed that people are paying that much money when PVA does exactly the same thing and uh, I don't know if he was aware of that but that ticked me off no end. <laughs> did you see about the Bugatti coming out in France or Italy? I did Howard but um, because of that I don't think it's going to be coming out in this country anytime soon. I did enjoy doing that um, trial though but uh, you're thinking about it you just I'm just gonna check something yeah yeah you, you, you're not gonna like this Howard the um, if I if I if I can't see the trial coming out and I can't give the things away, I I um I, I chuck it. So so the the stuff that I had built for the Bugatti I don't have anymore. I've still got the Harry Potter and the uh, Eddie Stobart. That's the only trial bits that I've got in this drawer down here. Everything else is gone. So uh, yeah, I don't. Oh, you had some transparent. <laughs> I'll, I'll get some in because I'm. Gonna, I, I don't know what I'm going to be using it for yet. I'm in the process of uh, of printing Jim's Superman off at the moment, and the uh, uh, this this thing that I made here just needs a top and a bottom on it. So uh, the black BLA will be good. The Bugatti's by um, who is the Bugatti by? It's Diego Costini, isn't it? No, oh, Eagle Moss. I can't remember. <laughs> That's what happens when you do that. You can buy clear PVA glue. No, no, no. The Michael Bradley, the the glue looks exactly like this. It's it's white. The P PVA, you know, just like your school glue. Exactly the same thing. I swear, it's exactly the same thing. I'll be shocked if it's not. But pff, I didn't believe it until I did it because I thought there's there's got to be a reason why people swear on this but don't mention P PVA. And uh, well, I couldn't see a difference at all. <laughs> that's like me buying puzzle glue in the small bottles and come to find out Elmer's glue clear is the same dang stuff and a lot cheaper it's crazy isn't it we got the same thing over here with our medication Howard that you can go into like a, a pharmacy and get a branded I don't know I think uh, I'm trying to do the American to UK conversion you got your Tylenol but over here it's just called paracetamol but then you get the home brands and they are exactly the same uh, so much so when you turn it round and you look at the INDN number or whatever, you know, they're they're exactly the same. But they're like a quarter of the price. Absolutely crazy stuff. Altea. Altea is Dash Riptide. Uh, Altea is Dash Riptide. Altea is Diagostini. <laughs> so, um, yeah, part of that. But uh, all good. But anyway, I can't believe how quick an hour's gone tonight. That's gone absolutely crazy. I hope I've gave you a little insight into Arduino, but check out, um, if, if you really are interested in learning how to use an Arduino, check out that YouTuber site there and start from lesson one. He is, he. I don't know if he is a teacher, but it is so comprehensive and easy to understand. 
I mean, I've probably just whizzed through it tonight just to whet your appetite. But uh, yeah, check him out and he will teach you everything you need to know about how to use an Arduino. But uh, I am going to be live streaming tomorrow. Hopefully we're back on the Super Duper Restream channel. But uh, who knows, the thing's been playing up tonight. But uh, thank you for joining me, everybody. And I will catch you tomorrow. See you later.